This is my speech on how mononucleosis and COVID-19 have similar symptoms. Imagine working out or playing a sport with a bunch of people where you're pushing yourself to be better and to build up your endurance. It can seem to when your body starts to react in a sort of way. Such as when you start to feel tired very quickly, have your breathing sometimes not be able to go in properly or come out properly when you start to feel like breathing through a straw and start to heat up. That is what happens to me every time when I play my sport, which causes inflammation in my body to not be able to have me perform the way I want to because of the limitations which I've had to deal with for the past nine years, where it's called MIS, which is short for multi-inflammatory syndrome, which is also found in COVID-19 as well. And within me getting COVID this year has brought me back to square one to recovery. According to Health Day News for could the monovirus be driving long haul COVID it states how the doctors on taking a closer look at 30 of the long haul COVID patients that have researched have found out that 20 of them carried levels of EBV antibodies high enough to suggest Epstein-Barr reactivation. The Epstein-Barr virus is a long haul of mono that becomes a long term. Today, we're going to learn about inflammation that is caused by mononucleosis and COVID-19. We will be discussing what is mononucleosis and COVID-19, their effects, and treatments. First, let's talk about what mono mononucleosis and COVID-19 are. In 2021, WebMD, which is the most popular credible source to look into for health information in the U.S., stated that mononucleosis is an infant is an infectious illness that's usually caused by the Epstein-Barr virus, stash for EBV. It's also called mono or the kidney disease, where COVID-19 doesn't have to be the EBV to get sick, but does have similar traits on having similar symptoms. What does kissing have to do with mono? It's rephrasing that if you share your saliva with other people, for example, drinking with other people's refreshments, you can get COVID or mononucleosis that way. How can mono and COVID-19 have similar symptoms when they are not even the same disease? They're more similar than you think because of how they both share the same inflammation that damages the body. From the same article which mentioned the most people are exposed to mono at some point in their lives, in the US about 85 to 90% of adults carry the virus by the time they're 40. Also from the Mayo Clinic News Network, they said that COVID-19 virus can spread when a person is exposed to small, very droplets or arousals that stay in the air for several minutes or hours, called airborne transmission. Normally for people that would get mono, it would mostly flow out of their system within the first couple of weeks and feel better. Where for me, it didn't, which led to EBV and becoming long-term where there's a rare percent of people that end up living with it forever and not being able to recover from it at all. It took me so long to start from zero and only reach 60% to later move back to zero again from getting COVID-19. As for COVID, being in contact with someone, at, let alone if they are living with you in your household, is difficult to get away from and follow all the guidelines to stay safe. For me, it was hard to dodge because my mom brought it home and later on got everyone else in the household sick, which included me. With all the information that I told you about what mono and COVID have done to me, I haven't even gotten a chance to mention inflammation is the main cause of both of these diseases. According to the Healthline article on understanding and managing chronic inflammation, inflammation refers, refers to your body's process of fighting against things to harm it, like infections, injuries, toxins, and attempt to heal itself. That's where the chronic stress that is being put on your body creates more and more inflammation. That is what happens to me whenever I'm stressed out, whether it comes from school or playing basketball. Now that we've explored what mononucleosis and what COVID is, let's discuss its effects. There are some effects where it can damage the body permanently, which have happened to you physically that leads into a long term of these viruses. Mono and COVID have similar distinctions that have to do with your, with you causing the body to not function like it used to after damaging being made to the physical body. In the Healthline article back when we talked about the, what COVID and mono is, it mentions the causes 
it has on the physical body, which causes fatigue, anxiety that leads to stress on the body to tense up, and persistent infections that lead to you getting sick a lot, which is what happens to me. There's never a time when I am not sick, which has weakened my immune system, where it may not go back to normal. The part that mono and COVID can create the most problems for is how your physical body may never be the same. If you take a look at the video, you will get if you take a look at the video, you will get a good understanding of what I mean about what I'm trying to explain, which will be in my final video. Did you see that the Did you see that this is life threatening? This happening to me when I was a kid, but with mono. COVID basically is the same thing when it comes to inflammation and is the worst when you get it, get it as a kid. Hopefully when you try to figure out a way to stop this inflammation from happening in COVID. They could do the same thing for mono as well as they won't have to deal with this long-term effects of having the damage to their bodies ever again. Now that we have discussed effects, let's, let's explore the treatments of both of these diseases. When you get COVID or mono in your system, you tend to get you tend to want to get rid of it as fast as you can. Let's talk about some of these treatments. From the Nationwide's Children website, it says that mono symptoms usually go away on their own after a few weeks, but the best treatment is getting plenty of rest, drinking lots of liquids, and eating healthy. It was a big change in order to try and get healthy again from having mono, but it was just, was an odds to heal, but it wasn't just in the odds for me to heal completely from it and not and to have me have the long-term effects of it. According to Harvard Health Publishing and Harvard Medical School, letting us know about having symptoms while you need to stay in bed, you would get plenty of rest, stay well hydrated, to reduce fever and ease aches and pains, take antidepressants or ibuprofen, be sure to follow directions, and this is for COVID-19. Also, of course, to take the vaccine shot in order to not get sick. It sucks for me though because I have already gotten the booster shot and still got COVID a few weeks later after getting it. To conclude everything up, today we learned about mononucleosis and COVID-19. We talked about what mono and COVID and its effects and, and treatments. For mono, that one out of 10 people can have long-term as well with COVID. Tying back to the story of how it has affected me for most of my life, it may not ever recover from it. I hope that you can understand when you see someone who has this sort of asthma or trouble breathing kind of problem, you know how, you know with this knowledge that you understand what they have to go with, go through in order to keep up with everyone else. Especially when you can't be able to play the sport that you want to play to your fullest potential. I've had to struggle with that for so many years and it has been extremely stressful and exhausting and troubling for me. But hopefully with this knowledge that I have provided for you that you will understand and see. Thank you so much.